Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. What we've got for you today is an Afterlife review. Now, Afterlife is a TV series on Netflix, uh, which is basically contains Ricky Gervais as a man named Tony. And basically what it is, is a British comedy, dark comedy, with a bit of drama and, and in it as well. And basically it's about uh, Ricky Gervais' character, Tony, uh, who his wife basically passes away of cancer and it's basically about his day-to-day -day life after that which you might think well that's not much of a series well he because of that he sort of becomes obviously very sad very angry and starts sort of taking out on other people and just becomes really really honest probably too honest and basically just tells people what he thinks and basically says what he does says what he wants to say does what he wants to do and basically kind of uses a superpower to basically take his anger out and not care anymore and live life freely. And as I said, use it as a sort of superpower for him. Um, and like he just doesn't really care anymore. And um, he sort of becomes not really fun to be around for other people. Sometimes he says things to people um, and people he's with find it funny. But overall, he's quite an angry and quite a sad character. And he's not very happy within himself. Um, and as I said, it's about his day-to-day -day life afterwards, and basically, I don't want to obviously, I don't want to try to say too much without spoiling it. But um, you know, he sort of makes friends along the way and gets to know people who are sort of going through similar processes, and gets connections. Uh, he meets a couple of people who are also grieving, and that really helps him as well. So that's sort of Tony's character. He is the main character, and uh, I'm then going to go through some of the other characters, and then give my overall opinion on the program and whether or not I recommend it for you guys. That's sort of a basis of what it's about. I could go into more detail, but then I'd probably ruin what the series is about and what happens, and I don't really want to do that because if I recommend it to you guys and you end up watching it, I don't want to ruin it for you because it's no point you watching it. But he basically, he works in a newspaper, and uh, the local free newspaper, and he works in the office there doing the stories and the editing and things like that, really. So I'm just going to go through now the staff in the office. The first character I'm going to include is Kath. I think she's head of advertising, if I remember correctly, and she does all that sort of the advertisement stuff. And she's really into like horoscopes, and like she's quite religious, and she like believes in ghosts and things like that, really. Uh, and she just believes in she just believes in things that Tony doesn't believe in. And every time she says something, Tony sort of shuts her down. Um, she'd also say as well there are two series of Afterlife: series one, in which she is very angry and very like just doesn't care. And in the second series, he sort of becomes nicer to people and sort of starts getting a bit better. As I said, I don't want to ruin too much. But yeah, that's Kath. She believes in things that Tony doesn't believe in. And it's just quite a funny relationship. And she's also uh, got an obsession with Kevin Hart, which is quite funny. Um, another one is Sandy. Now, she's a young a young journalist getting into, into journalism. And she is really, really talented in the programme. Um, she basically has like good ideas. She's young, she's fresh, and like, she gets on well, really well with Tony because they're not the best people that work in the office. They're quite, they're really nice people, but they're just not the best at their jobs. But Sandy kind of comes in and she's actually really good at her job. Uh, and yeah, she bonds well with Tony, which is quite nice. And I think Tony sort of gets on with having someone younger in the office. And she, I think she, he sort of takes Sandy under his wing to sort of show where the ropes. And yeah, it's just quite a nice relationship between Sandy and Tony. The next character is Brian. You see, very, you see Brian very, very rarely in the program. Uh, I'm going to be putting pictures on the on the um, on the video so you know who these characters are as well. Because you might have watched Afterlife, or you might be watching Afterlife, and you might go, "Who's Brian?" I put a picture of Brian up on the screen. Um, I should have. And yeah, basically Brian, as I said, has got quite a small part in it. He basically delivers the newspapers. He's not in it loads. Um, but what I quite like as well is he's actually the same. Um, same actor, his name is David Earl, and he's also in Derek. Now, if you've seen Derek, which I've seen Derek, um, you'll know that uh, David Earl is quite a big character in, in Derek, and that's also from Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais stars in that, and also uh, has directed and produced that. Same as Afterlife, Ricky Gervais has got a big part in that too. Uh, I think he directed, produced, and obviously stars in Afterlife as well. So it's quite interesting, he's brought a couple of characters along as well. Uh, there's another character later on, which we'll get to talk about. 
uh, who was also in Derek. So he, he, he tended to bring characters along that he I think he obviously enjoys working with and those that are, are, are just good at their job. So yeah, Brian, you know, he, he's very similar. If you've seen Derek, if you haven't, then it's probably quite hard, but he's very similar in this as he is in Derek. He is very sort of smelly and dirty and, and just not hygienic and loves women and just loves like he just he's just quite a weird character very good very well played yet again though from david hill so yeah that's that is uh brian the next one is matt who is sort of like the boss doesn't own the newspaper but he's the boss he's got his own sort of bigger office i think he's i think his title is lead editor or something and basically uh it's tony's brother-in-law i believe and yeah they have kind of quite a cool relationship, exactly. And certainly in the second series, they get a bit closer, and and yeah, sort of Matt goes through some things in the second series, and sort of he starts sort of then getting a bit closer with Tony because they're both going through kind of a hard time. But yeah, so that's that's the uh, that's Matt, the the uh, lead editor, and Tony's brother-in-law. The next character then is uh, Lenny. Lenny um, is sort of. Yeah, again, I've seen him in a few things, and he's very similar in a lot of the things he's in. Uh, he's quite dopey and quite uh, thick. Um, my hair, I need a haircut badly. Sorry about that. But yeah, Lenny, um, Lenny is, is, he also goes around with Tony and gets like the stories, takes the pictures, and does some of the, uh, the stories of, of Tony as well. Um, and yeah, again, I say he's just dopey. He's not the sparkest, he's not the brightest spark. But he, he, he's a nice character and he's a nice person. And yeah, that's that for Lenny. Next is James, following on from Lenny. Uh, James is Lenny's partner in the program's son, who becomes more into it, I think, in the second series. I don't think you see him in the first. He's definitely in the second series, though. Doesn't have the biggest part. Uh, you'd also recognise James's character from Bad Education. He's also in that as well. Uh, as I said, I'm going to put a picture on the screen. So you should, if you've seen Bad Education, you'd recognise him from that too. The next one is Paul. Yet again, I don't think you see him in the first series. You definitely see him in the second series. Hasn't got the biggest part to play. You only see him a few times. But he's an important character to mention because he actually owns the office. The office builds in the newspaper building. And he actually owns the newspaper. And uh, he goes about selling the newspaper. I'm not going to say what happens. You have to watch it for yourself if you want to find out. But he actually wants to sell the newspaper and cash him. And obviously you'll have to watch it and find out what happens. And then the last character from the office really that's got a, an on, like a sort of a big speaking part is Valerie. But she is honestly, she'll, she says probably, I can probably count how many lines she has on both of my hands. She's got a very small part, but she's a receptionist. But that's about it really, she's a receptionist. She has a few parts nothing too special the next character we're going to talk about then is Emma <clears throat> sorry about that uh, and basically what uh, Emma works in the old people's home that Tony's dad uh, is in so Tony's dad uh, is in a old pe in a sort of like a care home uh, as he has dementia we'll get onto his character in a minute and basically Emma works as I think she's one of the main people in the care home she's like the only carer you really see um, there are others though. Uh, but yeah, she works at the care home and Tony visits this care home to visit his dad every day. And they sort of start having a bond and a connection. And so they sort of fancy each other, but nothing really happens for a long time. Yeah, again, don't want to spoil it. You'll have to see all of the episodes to find out if they get together, if they don't, etc. Bear with me, just going to get my next page of notes. To do these videos, I have to have notes, otherwise I literally, I'll ramble all day and night. So I have to have notes. Why I keep looking over there, by the way. But the next character we're going to talk about then is Tony's psychiatrist. I don't think you actually ever find out what his name. I googled the characters before this to, to make sure I didn't forget any main characters. And he was literally down as Tony's psychiatrist, which is like quite funny. But um, he's a very weird character. He's very sexual. Uh, he's obsessed with sexual things and... Has two friends with weird names. Uh, I'm not going to say one here, but you have to watch it to find out what their names are. Uh, yeah, he's um, he's not a very good psychiatrist. Um, probably getting loads of money from it. Um, 
I've never been to a psychiatrist, but yeah, he's not great. Um, just like isn't really helpful. Doesn't like people moaning. Doesn't think men should moan, which he's not really in the best job then, is it really, is he? Um, he is funny though. He is a really funny character. Like he's got some really funny lines. Swears a lot, unfortunately, but yeah. That's how he is, that's how his character is. He's very funny and he's got some very funny stories with his friends as well. So yeah, he's a very funny character, but about a weird character. Um, and not to say too much, he kind of becomes Matt's psychiatrist at one point, uh, at some point in the second series as well. But I'm not going to give away too, away, uh, give away too much. The next character then is uh, Daphne. I don't think you actually properly hear a name being referred to as Daphne very often. We'll put a picture on the screen to, to jog your memory. But as soon as I describe her, you'll know straight away who I'm on about. It's Tony's friend, basically. I don't know how they know each other. Uh, but basically, she is a sex worker or a prostitute. But she likes to be referred to as a sex worker. Um, and she's very supportive for Tony. They get on quite well. She just keeps letting herself into the house all the time, which is quite funny. Uh, and, yeah. She's, she's just quite supportive. She doesn't really do loads. Uh, you see a lot more in the second series than you do the first. Um... But overall, yeah, very supportive for Tony. Helps him out quite a bit. And uh, yeah, on to the next character. So the next character actually is Tony's wife. Um, the reason I haven't mentioned her sooner is because she leaves videos for Tony. That's the only time you really ever see it. Obviously, she's, the start of the series, she's already died. So like, you don't see her properly in the series loads. It's just the videos and stuff that she has uh, left Tony. So... And I said that earlier on that there's a character that you uh, you see and um, in previous programs made by Ricky Gervais and Lisa is Lisa's character is um, a actress in real life is uh, also plays a big character in the, in Derek which I mentioned earlier which is another program by Ricky Gervais I think it's quite nice you tend to use the same characters I just think it allows uh, you to be able to know who you're working with, know that they're really good and really professional. So the next character then is Anne. Um, I don't know when you first see Anne, I think it's quite early in the first series. And basically Anne is the uh, lady. Um, basically obviously Tony goes to visit the uh, grave of his wife uh, every day. And when he sits on this bench, just literally next to the grave, like literally opposite it, there's this woman who sits down by him one day and she they sort of start talking and they basically come to realise that basically next to Lisa's grave is um I think it's oh what's his name? I can't remember his name. But basically Anne's husband also has passed away recently and their graves are next to each other and they basically start talking and bonding and stuff. And I'd actually say Anne was a better psychiatrist than Tony, uh, Tony's actual psychiatrist. So yeah, they end up talking. He's like, she's a really good support system, I think, for Tony. Vice versa, I think Anne's able to talk to Tony a lot about her, how she's feeling. I think it's just helpful when you're grieving and you're going through a tough time that when you can talk to someone else going through the same thing, then obviously it's a lot easier for you. Um, that's all for Anne, I think. Next one is Ray. Uh, Ray is Tony's dad, who I said has dementia and is in the care home. Doesn't say loads, obviously due to the, the dementia, but um, has a part to play in the series because if he didn't have to go and visit his dad up so often, he wouldn't have met uh, the character I mentioned earlier on. And Ray's actor is also in Game of Thrones, which I'm currently watching at the moment, which I will be doing a review on once I finish it, which will be a while yet because I'm still on series two. Don't judge me. I'm late to the party. I know. Very, very good. But I'm just very late to the party. It's good though. But yeah, he's in that. And as soon as I put a picture on the screen, you'll probably recognise If you've seen Game of Thrones, you'll recognise him. The next one then is Postman Pat. No, don't get confused. It's not a crossover. Uh, basically, there's a postman in it. And his name is Pat. Ironic. I think obviously it's done on purpose. Uh, is a really nosy postman. Uh, reads Basically reads Tony's post quite a lot. And they just have quite a funny and weird relationship. Uh, Tony sort of one day writes him a postcard and he knows it, that the postman Pat is going to read the postcard. And basically Tony's put a not very nice message in the postcard. 
and the postman reads it and understands it's for him. And yeah, it's, they're just like they become friendlier near the end. I said I don't want to give away too much. Uh, and yeah, but basically, he's really funny. And yeah, I put a picture on the screen. You'll recognize him. Uh, he's in lots of other things. Very good comedian. Joe Wilkinson, I think his name is. Yeah, very, very good comedian. But they're the main characters in an Afterlife uh, series one and two. I don't think there are many others that you see that I've got that big of a part to play. There's a few, but I just thought they're not really probably worth mentioning. It's probably better if you watch it yourself. There's actually not loads of characters in it. They're very much the same characters, focuses on the same characters as they are the people in Tony's life. But um, as I said, there are a few I probably could have mentioned. I think it's just better if you watch it yourself and you very quickly learn and find out those characters. But overall, I think it's a very, very good show. Uh, I'd recommend it to anyone who likes comedy. If you've seen things from Ricky Gervais before, highly, highly recommend watching Afterlife. I actually watched Afterlife Series 1 and then went back and watched like Derek. And I've seen... I saw The Office a while ago. But I went back and watched Derek after watching Afterlife Series 1. Just because I like Ricky Gervais and I think he's really funny. And like the programs he makes are like funny. But they concentrate on like important and like good talking points. I think people need to talk about more. Uh, certainly in Afterlife, like suicide, mental health, grief... Uh, people just being desperate to be famous, like you, you very like basically the free newspapers is full of just rubbish stories, really. Like people making things up. Like one is like this bloke makes toast one morning, and it's burnt, and it looks like the shape of like a celebrity or something. One, this man's like blind, and he's basically putting his letters in a dog poo bin. You can see that near the end of series two, and like it's just it's just ridiculous stories. But people are desperate to be known and desperate to be famous and desperate to have attention because they're just lonely and loneliness is another thing that it, it focuses on a lot um everyone's great in it i can't really fault anyone like the actors and actresses in this program are brilliant i think casting has been done really well i think ricky gervais will have a large part in the casting i'd imagine because as i said he has quite a few people who he's had in previous uh, programs he's made and i think it's just clever you know that they're gonna work you know that they're gonna be professional but overall, I couldn't really fault anything in the program. And I think it's really well made. would recommend it. Five out of five, I'd give the show. And yeah, if you want to watch a comedy that has a bit of sort of some serious stuff in it too. If you want to chuck something on, it, you know, you can fly for episodes. I think they're about 40 minutes long. But trust me, they fly by. Um, but yeah, I really, really would recommend it. I'm going to end this one here though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. You might as well. And comment below what other TV programs or films you want me to watch. And I will review them for you. I give them a watch. I just want to quickly say as well. The support recently has been really, really amazing on the channel. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. And yeah. It's great. It's really, really. Like when you're in lockdown. You haven't got a lot to do. I just thought I'll do these videos to pass some time. But as I said, the support is brilliant. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Loads of ideas at the moment, so hopefully you'll see some different content coming soon. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.